I'm glad that you joined me today. I'm going to talk today about the bride's walk. I have seen through the scripture that the church is described as the bride and that in this period of time we are to be preparing ourselves as a bride prepares for that great wedding day. And I've done many, many weddings and I'm always, I, I always love doing weddings because each wedding is completely different. It's very unique. Uh, the style, the ceremony, the form, everything is always uh, different and also very, very exciting. So one of the key elements in a wedding, of course, is when the bride walks down the aisle. And no bride has ever walked down the aisle the same. Matter of fact, every individual that created by God has a different walk. You walk different. No one walks exactly the same. It's, it's amazing to me. But on that day, the walk is, it's, it's very, very unique. And the traditional manner is uh, people are gathered, guests, family, best man, maid of honor, everybody's there. And the last one to enter in to the building is the bride. Traditionally, the bride is escorted by her father. And uh, before the wedding day, there's always practice. And I go to the practice, of course, and, and uh, most of the time the bride and her dad come in and they walk pretty rapidly to the front. Uh, it's just kind of a normal gait. And I've always had to tell them, just slow down. Uh, just please slow down and, and let everybody watch you. And, and it's, it's a walk and the dad's got his daughter and they walk down that aisle and don't go too fast. She's dressed beautifully, she's gorgeous, and so the day comes, uh, the groom is already in, uh, I'm already there standing next to the groom, and then the music plays, and everybody stands and watches the bride walk down that aisle. When the bride gets to the, uh, her groom, I usually ask the question, who gives this woman to be married to this man? And then the dad says, whatever he does, he takes uh, the hand of his daughter, gives it to the groom, and then they turn. And then we go through the ceremony of that wedding. When the wedding is concluded, they both turn to face the congregation, the people that are there, and I say, I present to you Mr. and Mrs., whatever their name is. And then they walk down the aisle. There's two different kinds of walks that bride does that day. One day, she's escorted by her dad, given to the man whom she loves and has decided to marry. When the ceremony's over, she turns and then she walks again, but not with her dad, but with her husband. From that day forward in her life, she will always be walking with her husband. Now think for a moment the two different kind of walks. One is slow and very ceremonious and smiling and whatever. But after they're married, it is usually it is a mad dash. Different music playing, singing, shouting, hooting, people clapping. Uh, it's, it's, it's just very different in a short period of time of the two different walks. So when you relate this to the body of Christ, that believers need to understand that God is not interested in just friendship. He's not interested in just having a good friend or a date or uh, someone that is an acquaintance, he wants to have relationship, a very intimate relationship, and it is compared only in this world by a wedding or a marriage. So when a believer decides, look, I'm not going to just hang around Jesus. I'm not just going to follow his teaching 
I am going to be married to him. You need to understand that that relationship with the Lord comes to a, a, a greater level and that you are not alone and you will not ever walk alone. You will walk with him. There's a scripture in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 3. It says, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? So what it's saying is that I cannot walk with God unless I'm agreeing with him. How can that be possible? The word agreement is a very interesting word because what it means, it means to appoint or summon to a symbol to designate a meaning. I talked in my last podcast or uh, video concerning the meeting place of the bride and the bridegroom and related that to the cross of how Jesus Christ met man at his worst. And uh, there he did not judge man, but he met man there. This is a little bit different in the sense of agreement. We are meeting together. Once again, a woman and a man decide to be married. They have designated a day. They have designated what will happen at that day, and they're agreeing with it. So that day comes, and they agree. They meet there, the time, the place, and then in that meeting, they are agreeing how they will live with one another. This is a beautiful picture of my relationship with the Lord, your relationship with the Lord. You have agreed. This is somewhat of the understanding when the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly. And we have always just used that as a place that believers all get together and that they uh, sing or worship in the style. And the ceremony is completely different. It's probably never two churches ever do exactly the same because they're different people, different locations. But they have agreed to meet, but then it ends. When, when a couple gets married, it's not just I'll meet you at a certain building. Something is going to transpire that that changes the relationship they have had with each other from the very beginning. They are agreeing upon the promises that they are making to each other and how they will live and act and behave towards their spouse. This is the assembly that when we do gather, I am meeting with the Lord and I am agreeing with his word. This is why the scripture becomes very, very important. And when I agree upon that, my whole life is changed. It has become completely different because now I am walking with Jesus Christ in agreement with his word. There's a scripture that I like to talk to you about, about how a beautiful bride. Uh, when I think of the church, does beauty come into your mind immediately? It's just beautiful. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, it doesn't happen with me. Uh, many times when I think of church, I think of uh, problems or issues and all kinds of things happening. But beauty, the beautiful church, is a, a rare description. If I ask somebody, what do you think of the church? You, you'll never say or hear beauty. And the reason is, is because we don't think, we're, we don't understand what beauty is. Listen to these powerful words in scripture. And it is talking about wives relating to their husbands. But I don't want you to think of a marriage. I want you to think of how the church relates to Jesus as his bride. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if they obey not the word, they also may without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be of outward adorning, of plating the hair, wearing of gold, putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, 
which is in the sight of God of great price. So it is saying here that let not your beauty, the adorning, another word for adorning is your beauty. Your beauty is not coming from the outside. The church's beauty is not the outside. The church's beauty is not in its building, its program, its ceremony. Its beauty is inward. The beauty is of the spirit. A church's beauty is coming from her spirit. And her spirit has learned to walk in agreement with her Jesus or her Savior, her King, her Lord, her Groom. However you describe that, something dynamically has happened within my spirit and I'm walking. You see, when you see a, a woman walk, the way she walks can be beautiful. I'm not talking about walking. You, you just, just make a mental note of it. Watch how people walk. Uh, you can describe and learn much about a person by their walk. They walk in arrogance, you know, pride. They walk like they're ready to go to a fight. Uh, many walk as a slave. Many times in marriage, a husband thinks he's the king and he forces this agreement upon her. And so she agrees. And what happens is that, that she's not walking in beauty. She is actually walking as a slave. This is not pretty. But a woman, when the church has learned to adorn itself by agreeing with Jesus, with the scripture, with the word, there comes a change in their spirit on the inside and their behavior and their walk is beautiful and very attractive. I pray you catch this. I pray that God give you understanding of what I'm talking about, because in preparing myself as an individual, being part of the bride of Christ, I'm preparing more about my inward man, more of my spirit than the outward. The, the, the power then, listen, the, the, it says, let it, the beauty let it not be putting on of the gold and the apparel, but let it be of the hidden man. And this is extremely valuable in the sight of God. Why? Because you see, Jesus not only paid the ultimate price, but so does a bride. For a woman to become a bride, she pays a price. She's going to begin to position herself in agreement with her husband. This may cost her career. It may cost her her emotions or feelings. She's not a slave. She does this free willingly out of her love and she submits herself. This is why it says be in subjection. That's, that, that's not a great word today because it seems like slavery. It seems like I'm losing here. I'm losing my life and I'm now a slave to God. I'm a slave to Jesus. No, no. Because of my love for him, I want to have a relationship with him that is intimate. And my relationship is not going to be dependent on the outside. It's going to be dependent upon my spirit submitting myself in great humility. Great humility. Because he knows best. And he, everything he does is for my own benefit. He's the perfect husband. You'd be, excuse the expression, a fool not to submit yourself. Oh, would you not want to be married to a king? that can provide everything for you. Well, to have a proper relationship with him. I cannot walk in pride and independence. I walk in agreement. And as I walk in agreement, I walk different. My behavior changes. My attitude changes. See, people are all concerned about the outside. So they even try to be holy on the outside first. It's ugly. <laughs> We see that. We see people walk religiously. And I love them. 
I, I have nothing against them. But I see because of the Word of God. The Word explains this. Not me. The Word explains this. That my beauty is on the inside. Now coupled with that, the power or the authority of the bride is once again not on the outside. See, the church thinks its power is politics. The church thinks its power is in numbers. The church thinks that if we have a big building, big following, then we have power and influence. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The power of the bride lies in her beauty. Think for a moment. A bride married to the king. No one has the ear of the king like the bride. When Becky comes to me and says, I'd like to talk to you about something, I give her my ear like I give none other. My children don't have my ear that way. Nobody, you don't have my ear that way. But Becky does. She has more sway over me than anybody else in this world. Other than God himself. God is the only one. And God tells me, to walk with him, that he is my husband, and I walk with him in agreement. And as I do that, I have tremendous power because I have the ear of the king. That's what prayer is all about. But if I'm trying to impress God with the outward apparel, it doesn't fly. If I try to force God's hand and make him do something and accuse him and walk in arrogance and bitterness or anger or disappointment, I'm hindering my own authority and power. The most powerful entity, body in the world is the church. It's not in its power, it's not in its numbers and money. It's beauty or it's building. It's because the church, the bride, those that have chosen to walk in agreement with the king, they have his ear. Their prayer is different. Yes, it is. It's different than the one just crying out to be saved. It's different than the one just crying out to be fed. It's different than the one just falling in danger and needing to be rescued. But when the bride comes and says, the love of my life, I'd like to talk to you. <laughs> you have his ear. You have an audience with your husband. And remember who your husband is. I'd like to try to show you how a bride walks. Has her authority, has the humility, the quiet spirit inside, not not. A slave, not a little church mouse. No, no, no. A, a, a spirit within her that is very, walks in agreement next to her spouse. And to describe that walk, how does it look? How, how, does, how can you see it on the outside? How, there's got to be something visible, which it absolutely is. And uh, in the Bible, it points to a, a picture of a, of, of a really a good wife. Watch this. It's in the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. It starts out and says, who can find a virtuous wife? Now, once again, don't say wife, but bride or church. Who can find a virtuous church? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. Can God trust you? <laughs> Can God trust the church? He looks. Jesus kind of hinted at it when he says the Father seeks those that will worship him in spirit and truth. We're back to worship. And worship is not just the singing of a song. The worship is a positioning of my heart where he is Lord and his word I agree with. Not that I'm forced, not that I lost my will. 
but that I know I've come to understand and believe that his word is the best. So who can find a virtuous church? She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brought her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her prophets, she plants a vineyard. You see, this woman, this church, is very concerned for the relationship she has with her Lord. She'll give. She'll sacrifice. She'll make deals in the sense to benefit the, the church, the kingdom of God. She wants to benefit the, her spouse's business. I, I, I'm concerned, very concerned about the kingdom of God. Not concerned in a sense of worrying that it's going to fall apart because it's ruled and held together by the King, Jesus. But I've given my life to benefit it. I want to do it good and not evil. I'll labor. This woman labors. This is a wife that buys and sells a piece of property and builds on it to profit the family. She goes on. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She See, she... Uh, she loves her husband, but she knows how to encourage herself. She knows how to build herself up. The body of Christ is almost uh, always dependent upon even one member over the other instead of knowing how to build yourself up. Build yourself up. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. You can do that. Amen. I need to be strong for the benefit of the body of Christ. Amen. Oh, this is, this is a beautiful bride. This is why I see now the beauty. Beauty isn't in her money, in her building, not even the clothes she wears. The beauty is in that spirit that knows how to be strong in the Lord. The power of his might stretches her hands to the staff, her hands handle the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. And reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household. For her household is clothed with scarlet. She ain't afraid of different seasons. She fears nothing. Because she knows her husband gave her a sound mind, power, and love. Not a spirit of fear. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine. Linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. <laughs> she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. I pray that the Lord could be proud of me, of the church, the bride. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and all let her works praise her in the gates. Psalm 31, I encourage you to read that. The bride, the bride's beauty and the bride's power. God's doing such a wonderful thing in the church, in his bride. He loves the bride dearly and he is equipping her and causing her to awaken to her role and to learn how to walk with him. To be in agreement with him in all joy and rejoicing. I pray today that Jesus Christ reveal to you these words of truth. I pray that Jesus Christ enter into your life in a way that shines 
and you begin to catch a glimpse of the one that is asking you to marry him, he will not force this on you. He will not make you do anything. But oh, I pray your eyes may be opened and that you may know the riches of his inheritance in the saints, that you might know him and the power of his resurrection, and yes, even in the fellowship of his sufferings, and that you may be lifted up far above all principality and power. This is a great day, for this is the day that Jesus Christ is coming for his bride. And I pray that you be amongst those that are called his bride.